Okay, hey everybody. Doing another video here from the desert. Um, quick kind of preview of Am versus Butler. That is the second, the final um, involuntary confession that was included in Schimmel's opening brief. Um, so Am versus Butler is the very, very interesting one in my opinion because that's the one that Laura Nyrider mentions in her brief. And she says that it's odd that, that Brad Schimmel and that the state would bring that case up um, because it's actually, of all the cases that they listed, it's the most. It's the one that's the most like Brendan's. Um, it's interesting. I've been reading on it. I don't, and I, don't, I want to do it justice, so that's why I'm doing this preview now, because um, I really want to dig into it properly and look at it. But I mean, it's it seems pretty interesting. What I've already been reading about it. I mean, it seems like a pretty crazy little case. Um, kid. The kid was uh, 11 years old when he originally gave an, a, a statement to police um, regarding a murder. Um, he was 11 years old. By the time the police came back around to question him, again, because for some reason the, the officer that had, had spoke to him like six months previous, I believe it was, um, wanted to question him again. So they came back. By that time, he was 12. So he was basically a 12-year-old. Um, and... He, you know, 12 and 16 are only four years apart. And this kid seems like he was pretty sly. He seems like he was, you know, for a 12-year-old, he seems like he he liked to push buttons. And, you know, he's, uh, you'll see, you know, obviously I'll show you some, I'll show you some documents at the end of this when I'm done talking. But, um, but basically this kid's pretty savvy. So he's, he's, he's a pretty sharp 12-year-old. And when you look at Brennan, Brennan, you know, obviously with his learning difficulties and disabilities, you know, kind of thing, um, he he kind of comes down maybe to around that level when he's 16 years old. So um, I'm going to go ahead and leave it there. Um, and, I, and we will be revisiting this case more, but I wanted to go ahead and do this little preview. <clears throat> Cassidy told Morgan he didn't believe his story. Why, he said, would Coleman have let Morgan go if Morgan actually witnessed the murder? Cassidy emphasized to Morgan that he had only told lies up to that point and that he needed to tell the truth. Morgan then changed his story again. He said Coleman asked him to be a lookout while he went inside to rob Gilvis. At some point, Gilvis was the unfortunate victim. Um, at some point, Morgan entered the home and saw what he had described earlier. Cassidy again accused Morgan of lying. According to Cassidy, Morgan then started crying and declared, I hated her and I killed her. She, she called me nigger almost every day. Cassidy testified that at this point, he didn't say anything to him, to Morgan. Just kept, he, Morgan just kept going and kept talking. Morgan said that he struck Gilvis with her cane, uh, tied her up, got a knife, and stabbed her. Cassidy testified that at no point did he ask Morgan any questions instead he just sat in sh he just sat there in shock at the hatred he saw in Morgan's words and actions after hearing these words Cassidy is Cassidy summoned uh, an assistant state's attorney Steve uh, Klaczynski uh, to join them he also called uh, he also called Tim's Tim's uh, which is his which is the boy's mom but got no answer when Klaz when when Klaczynski arrived, they were joined by a youth officer who, as far as we can determine, did nothing to help Morgan in his predicament. Klaczynski read Morgan his Miranda rights, which Morgan said he understood. Cassidy asked Morgan to tell Klaczynski and the youth officer what Morgan had told him. Morgan requested the same, or sorry, repeated the same story, but he added that he, he added after the murder, he threw his clothes in a dumpster. About an hour later, the police reached Tim's, and she came to the station. Morgan, Tim's, and Klaczynski spent the next hour talking. Klaczynski again advised Morgan of his rights. Both Morgan and Tim's responded that they understood what was said. Morgan, however, backtracked again and, and told his mother, I didn't kill anybody. Tim's asked Morgan, well, did you tell these men here that you, did, you had done it? And Morgan said, yes, I did. I told them I did. Tim's replied, well, if you didn't do it, why did you tell them that? He responded, I don't know. I just did. So 
all right, this kid's got like some serious confusion issues or I, or, or he likes to do outrageous things for attention. Um, I don't know. I'm not really sure, uh, you know, how guilty this kid really is or could be either. I'm, you know, so that's why I'm actually going to be doing another video on this because I just think it's kind of strange. Like, especially the thing about the clothes in the dumpster. It's like, okay, wait a second. You threw your clothes in the dumpster. Okay, well, that means you were naked, you know. I, you know, I'm curious about the circumstances of that. I mean, it seems a little unbelievable. So it's like a lot of his stories here, he's telling different stories and I haven't even shown you everything yet. He's told multiple stories. Um, like I said, this is just a teaser preview. Um, but he, he, he's telling all kinds of different stories. So I don't know if it's just because he feels so completely intimidated as an 11 year old, but clearly the, 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 the officer really felt shocked when he saw you know morgan uh begin to talk and the like he said he commented about the the hatred and the the like rage that he saw in morgan when he was talking about killing uh miss gilvis so anyways if you haven't already please hit subscribe and um everybody you have a nice day